is there something we could design that would actually generate useful power from the kind of temperature differences we can get from, say, a typical cook fire or from sunlight. One of the interesting examples of this is something called the thermoacoustic engine. How does this work? It's kind of magic. This solid state thing converts heat into mechanical work. And designing it's really hard, but making it once you have the design is pretty simple. Uh, is it sunny outside today? It's, it yeah. is, it is, it is medium sunny. Okay, so I think that's, it's good to parallel path and yeah. use the blowtorch. Yeah, oh yeah. Our goal at Google X is to find great big problems, problems that affect ideally billions of people, and come up with some, some real breakthrough solution a solution that's at least 10 times better than like anything that anybody's tried yet. And it's not just like, oh, hey, we'll sort of poke at this. We dedicate real resources with the goal of we are going to go to the moon. If we got a flywheel turning like on, on the first go, that would be yeah, in so day. incredibly awesome. I think, yeah. I think if we could just like hear this thing operating, if that, would be, sort of that would be a yeah. big win. Cool, so let's hit the hardware store then. The process of innovation is messy. It's expensive, it's uncertain. Even with Google X and the resources we have here, we can only afford to pursue some small number of these moonshots at a time. Yeah, that's well, interesting. Or like you could get something like this and stuff it. We have a process that we call rapid evaluation. So the way we do that is we try to fail quickly. I've got a great idea. Maybe I can solve the world's energy problem through thermoacoustic engines. Well, in a day or two, let's do some experiments that give us an idea about how feasible is that? Ultimately, if we can get to a no quickly on an idea, that's almost as good as getting to a yes. Most people come hardwired, trained by society, that if they don't do the thing they said they were gonna do, if it doesn't come out bright and shiny and sparkly, that someone's gonna be mad at them. Everyone's almost like that the, the day they start with us. The question is whether they have the desire within them to unlearn that, to get to a place after 50 or 100 hugs where they'll believe us when we say, hey, it broke, it didn't work, awesome. Did we get a tool out of that? Do we know something we shouldn't do again? Let's try something different. We took a lot of different parallel paths uh, using different materials and uh, different methods to try to create this thermoacoustic engine. It was great to see everybody's incarnation of this being a little bit different. So Brian came up with a design that was kind of like a trombone where it was like two sliding pieces so he could change the, the length of the resonating chamber. Um, Kate came up with the idea of using the bottle and uh, simple like candle and, and steel wool. Um, I was working on more like the industrial version where I grabbed a, a piece of galvanized pipe and some steel wool and a blowtorch. And then Kurt actually was working on the other part of the problem, which is how do we generate that heat? So if we're not using a fire, if we're not using a stove, um, can we use solar to try to collect up some of that power? We were looking for it to just hum. We wanted it to get some sort of audible feedback that this thing was actually oscillating. Um, so we're looking for that resonant frequency, almost like blowing over the top of a bottle. And as of right now, well, we're not exactly seeing tremendous overwhelming success with our thermoacoustic engines. Yeah, it should be oscillating. Which indicates that maybe making these things is a little bit harder than we thought. And that's actually like really good to know. So it means that maybe we need to go back and I need to actually like go back to that physics and check my equations. It may mean that, well, these are just difficult things to make, and as a result, they may not be the right tool to be the super inexpensive, low power, distributed power generation thing. Think about what we all wish scientists would do. They don't run experiments where they insist that the outcome be positive. They run experiments whose purpose is to create knowledge and learning, because each piece of learning creates acceleration. I like this idea of creating artifacts of the future. So if you think about reverse archaeology, right? Some of the stuff that we're creating here is, is this physical token of something that may be you know, commonplace in the future. Sometimes what you think it's going to be is not always what it turns out to be. 
there's a lot of happy coincidence there and, and serendipity where we're creating something brand new and we have no idea where it's going to take us.